Okay, can everybody hear me? Okay, let me know if you can see the slide. Good day for everybody today. Good job. Everyone should be done. So I'm going to give a little lecture here today. I have Eric here with me today, and I'm going to give a little talk, just a short little lecture uh, for the room and for Eric. So I'm going to talk today about which are you. What does that mean? There's three different kinds of people that we're going to talk about today. An optimist, a pessimist, and a hopeful person. So first things first, you don't have to answer if you don't want to, but if you want to, type in the room, if you, which of these people do you think you are? Do you think you're an optimist, or do you think you're a pessimist, or do you think you're a hopeful person? What do you think you are? You don't have to answer if you don't want to, but if you want to, you can. I'm probably a pessimist. I'm a pessimist in everything. You I mean, think you're a pessimist? I don't know. Just, really? I don't know. In general, or just... I'm talking talking about in general, are you, this is in general, this isn't about trading. Oh, well, Well, something. If you had to categorize yourself, which are you? Mm. Journeywoman says a hopeful person. Anna's an optimist, Wild Weasel's an optimist, Rumi's an optimist with experience. You you think you're a pessimist? I don't know, I guess I am. Interesting. Okay. All right, well, let's talk about the three different categories. Okay. Galahad just closed out Google with profit of 1920. Good job. Excellent. So he's an optimist. (laughs) Okay. So an optimist is a person that what? A person that believes, okay, that (laughs) things are going to be okay, that things are good. Someone that, you know, has a positive attitude, that looks at the glass half full if there was a glass that looks at the glass half full. Gator's saying optimism but realistic. All right, some of you are making up new categories. (laughs) (laughs) We don't have subcategories here. (laughs) Koala bear's optimist with hope uh, slash hopeful person. Okay. Anyways, an optimist is someone that has a positive attitude, that, you know, that looks at the glass as half full, kind of about life. And I'm talking in general here, but of course we're going to relate this to trading because, you know, we trade and we talk about trading a lot and that's what we do in the room. A pessimist is someone that generally, you know, has a negative attitude first, you know, about something or doing something, whether it's trading or a relationship or a circumstance or or whatever, they they will err right to the side of the fact that something maybe negative would happen, tend to be in the negative side. Not that they're not a friendly person in life, but they generally don't have, you know, they have the attitude of the, looking at the glass with the water in it that it's half empty. Same glass that the optimist would look at and say is half full. Then you have the hopeful person. The hopeful person is someone that knows or believes that the good things are not going to happen, but wants them to (laughs) so hopes and hopes and hopes that the good things are going to happen like the optimist but really doesn't believe they are going to happen like the pessimist doesn't believe good things are going to happen so that's the hopeful person you think you're hopeful okay all right so here's a here's an example and i'm just gonna i'm just gonna use myself as an example here for tomorrow just to just to break it down tomorrow's supposed to snow i have to go back to pennsylvania tomorrow so what would a hopeful person say? A hopeful person would say that, you know, I hope it doesn't snow, even though I know that it's going to snow, that every forecast out there says that it's going to snow. A hopeful person would say, I hope it doesn't snow so I can make it back safely and I don't get snowed on and wet trudging my suitcase to the bus thing. I hope it doesn't snow and keep saying that, but knowing full well in reality that it is going to snow. A pessimist is saying, gosh darn it, I knew this winter wasn't over. It's crappy weather. I don't really want to go now at this time or take this bus. This is just, you know, so annoying. We've had 70 degree weather for the last, you know, week and a half. Why does it have to snow the one day that I'm going back to Pennsylvania? Then the optimist is, oh, we're going to get a beautiful snow. I'm going to get to go back to Pennsylvania and see the snow. Last snow of the year. It looks beautiful from, from my apartment. Looks gorgeous out. Going to be a great week with my family. It's my sister's birthday. Going to have a big party. You know, it'll be fun to, to spend some time with my mom and dad. Maybe I'll get to help my dad shovel, which I haven't done in, you know, however many years. And it's going to be beautiful to see the snow and the trees in Pennsylvania. 
that's an optimist, okay? So you could take almost any scenario and look at, at, at life that way or something like that. Oh, Journey Woman says change her to an optimist. Okay, we've done it. So how do you... <laughs> Rumi said someone's a party. Yeah, there's a party for my sister. That's why I'm going home. So anyways, the, the thing is that the whole idea of understanding which are you which I think is important to understand which are you, is that you're not, you're not stuck into any one of these categories. Even if you said to me, Melissa, I'm a pessimist, you don't have to be a pessimist for the rest of your life. Chances are you weren't born one, okay? So often what happens is that sometimes people's life circumstances create them to feel a certain way about life or things. Maybe they had hard times, okay? Or maybe they've had a hard time, for example, trading. So maybe the road trading has been very difficult for them. So they have a pessimistic attitude about trading, about, you know, learning about everything to do with the market. They're still trading. <laughs> they're still trading. They're still risking money. Some days they win, some days they lose. And in general, they're down. But they really have a, a pessimistic and negative attitude about the market, which is not ever going to create the success that they desire. The helpful person is not like the pessimist, but the helpful person is doing things Maybe doing the same strategy or maybe not having any strategy at all, sitting in the same trading room day after day after day after day after day for five years and doing the same thing and hoping it'll work because they really like the person. Maybe they really, maybe it's their, maybe they really like the, the guy that's leading the trading room and they love watching his videos or whatever and they're hoping, hoping, hoping that this is going to work for him. But in reality, he knows it's not because he's been trading for five years and he's given this a long, long time and it's just not working for him. He's not making money, and they're really this guy isn't isn't has no strategy at all, and and he doesn't want to face it. He doesn't want to face it. The the person in the room is just calling trades all over the place all day long from nine thirty to four. He he wants to be hopeful that he can make money in the market, but he's been losing for five years, and following the same guy or girl or whoever, and it's not working out. And that person is stuck and can't move forward because is, un is unwilling and unable to recognize that something needs to be changed, which is facing reality, which sometimes can be hard. Doesn't mean you can't make money to market, but it means that that guy is following the wrong person or doing the wrong strategy. And an optimist is someone that you know believes that they can make money in the market and has a good attitude, knows that when they make a mistake, sometimes it is the luck of the draw with the market or the strategy, and sometimes the optimist knows that it's their fault and they did something wrong, but they're optimistic, they're positive, they believe in themselves and they know they can make the changes necessary in order to fix it so they can do something and they can turn it around. An optimist is someone that when something bad happens, they find a way to turn the situation around from a negative one into a positive one. And that is an optimist. And they also are not so hard on themselves that they give up, which the pessimists do a lot. Pessimist people give up, give up before they even get out of the gate, okay? Almost give up before they even get off the ground at whatever point that happened in their life. And this is, again, relatable to trading or anything else. A pessimist is almost what I call someone that's jaded. Hard to fix. A lot of work. The hopeful person can be fixed. That person can turn into an optimist. Pessimistic people have a longer road to go and really have a lot of mental work to get over the hump to become an optimist. Not that they can't, nothing's impossible. But the attitude a pessimist had is that, is that you know, there are certain things that are impossible. And so I think it's very important to understand which are you right now, today, on March 9th. It doesn't mean that you're going to be the same person forever. I would hope that if you are an optimist, you stay one. But if you are a pessimist, then think about moving yourself into maybe at least the hopeful person realm and then into the optimist. Because ultimately, it doesn't serve your highest good to be anything other than an optimist. It really doesn't. Now, let me see the comments here. Rumi is saying, isn't the definition of insanity doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result? It sounds like it, but do you realize that Rumi is a lot of people that are like that? Um, I'm not going to go into great detail, but I spoke to a gentleman last night on the phone who was interested in, in the class this weekend, and he's been following, uh, which, which made me think about this lecture, but I was going to do this lecture at some point anyways. He, he's been following this person, and he said, I, I 
the person doesn't call the trade entries but says what they're looking at and he's he lost money with the person the first month and now he's not trading but he's like he feels he he feels hopeful this person is hopeful that he's going to be able to become a good trader like this person he believes this person is a good trader well I said well what's the strategy and he's like well it's a broad range of things so he couldn't really specify and I said well you're learning anything and he's learning about charts he's learning about basics but he's not really learning how to trade He's not learning how to trade from this person, but he's hopeful that he can he can become this person. But how is he going to become this person if he's not learning the strategy the person's doing? He never will. So this this man is hopeful and probably will one day realize that he can't learn what the person does unless the person teaches them. You people would never know what I know to do it yourself if I didn't teach you specifically and exactly what I do, which is the entries exactly and the points. Now, whether or not you have questions and there's a learning curve is completely different than not having any clue at all what the person's doing and just saying, I want to be like this person, they're a successful trader. Well, that isn't going to help you make money. Watching them do it doesn't help you make money. There are a lot of hopeful people out there that want to trade the market, but have absolutely no clue how to get to the point of actually doing it. And there are people that are also optimistic that want to trade but don't know how to do it either. That's okay. The Somebody said about the reality. Who was it? Uh, Galahad said he's optimistic but, you know, but a realist. You know, the, you know, the idea of realism is you look at the road ahead of you and the road ahead of you has a path. And you that doesn't mean that the path isn't going to involve work. The path involves work, okay? So the problem with the pessimist is the pessimist really doesn't have any, any more patience and no more doesn't want to do any work at all. The pessimist is like, if this works right away, then I will do it. If I can make a million dollars today, then fine. And if I can't, then screw it. I'm done or whatever. Again, this person is jaded, okay? So that's the pessimist. The optimist says, you know what? There's a road here. I've got to start the road. There will be stumbling blocks along the road. I understand that. Some of them are the mistakes that I will make. Some of them are things that have to do with just life's obstacles, but I will overcome them. That's the realistic part is that there's, there's stumbling blocks along the road that every person has. A hopeful person is there right at the edge of the road, wanting to get on the road, hoping that it's going to work out, but is afraid to, is afraid that the stumbling rocks are real because they're, because they kind of are thinking, what if it doesn't work? They're afraid. So the hopeful mm. person is in a fear mode. They want to believe that it's going to work, but they're afraid to go through the process of the stumbling rocks to go on the road, to walk down the road and actually go on, to walk on the rocks because there will be rocks along the way. Say you're walk, walking on the beach. Sometimes you walk on the beach early morning before they've cleaned the sand and you got to be careful you don't cut your feet if you're on your bare feet with one of the seashells. Rumi just said TLRT broke 16. Is anyone still in that? Mm -hmm. Anyone still in that? Don't have a connection. <laughs> Eric just jumped out of his seat and pressed the button. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll go over when we're done. We'll look at that when we're done. <laughs> Anyways, that, yeah, that was a yeah, that was a good call. I'm glad I made the quick flip to that today. Anyways, the whole point of today's lecture, and it's just, I just was a short talk today, was that it would be great if everyone could be in this in this column here that comes to me, or if you're not in this column, that you get in this column after a period of time. And if this these people have a lot of work to do, uh, these people have some work to do. These people have a lot. The interesting thing is, I don't, I have very few clients that are pessimists. Um, mainly because of the fact that I think if you're committed to doing what I what I do, if you're committed to learning with me, then you're committed to spending the money for the class, and it's not cheap. And so, therefore, you are committed, and you and you believe that it's going to work. You're either hopeful that you can do it, or you are an optimist and you believe it's going to work, and you're going to do the work necessary. Um, so, I think it's one of the reasons I have a good group of clients. You people here, and even people that are not in the room that that actually um, are trading on their own that I've taught. I don't think you're a pessimist. Mm -hmm. I've only known you for mm -hmm. off and on since you did the class, but you've been here for a couple of days. I wouldn't say you're a pessimist at all. Mm -hmm. You you are hopeful. You're yeah. cautious. Yeah. I'd say you're cautious, not okay. pessimistic. You're cautious, but that's okay. Some people are crazy and they want to go gung ho. I, cautious is there's nothing wrong with being cautious. Okay. 
I don't think you're a pessimistic person or you wouldn't be here for a week. No, that's true. Well, yeah. yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> comments or anything about this lecture think about where you are in the category and again you know it's it is a process if you're not an optimist to be in that category I think some people you know it has a lot to do with I think when you were young and the experiences you had you know early on when you were when you were a child and say you know maybe the first you know 10 years of your life how you were arranged and how you were brought up to, to look at things with a glass half full or half empty kind of thing. I think your upbringing has a lot to do with this. It's probably one of the reasons I'm a very optimistic person because uh, I have very happy, happy parents. But, you know, if you are a pessimist, you've got work to do. Acknowledge the fact that you are and work towards thinking more positively. Any comments? Any questions? Good little lecture here today. Is anyone still in TR TLRD? <laughs> You're so funny. No, it's 1036. You would be in a trade this late. This is kind of late to be in a trade. So you've been out of it now for over half an hour. You know? What if you had to go off, do something? You know what I mean? The goal is to get to the point where you can take the 2,800 shares and make the money that you did in that same trade and get it quickly. Okay. okay? Do the same trade that you did and get in and get out quicker with the size, but you're not there yet. But you got to do the action and then you'll get to that point. Gator says good lecture. Yeah, I think so too. So it's been it's been a good time in here. I got one more day with Eric and uh, we'll see what we get tomorrow. I think pay is a good gap down tonight. Think about the things I said today and, uh, and good job Galahad. He made the money in Google and... Uh, you exited where I had Eric exit. There's nothing wrong with that journey, woman. You have got to be stern with yourself. Discipline, 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 discipline. After you're out, don't do any more trades. Mm. Even Eric wanted to jump back into that. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a good lecture. You're welcome. Good job, Galahad. You got out with profit. Yay! He got in the other the other day when, when you did, whenever oh, I called okay. it, yeah. He's been in it for two days. But now you made sixteen hundred dollars in, in Target, you made nineteen hundred dollars in Google. So do you see it doesn't you don't need to hold things to to the, be worth one million dollars. There's absolutely no reason to hold these trades, you know, to thousands and thousands of huge home runs. Sixteen hundred in this one, nineteen hundred in this one, two thousand in this one, five hundred in this one. Do you see? You don't have to you chunk it out, chunk it, chunk it, chunk it. Okay? That's almost four grand in two trades in one week and two options. That's what you need to be doing. Yeah, I'm running the room tomorrow. I'm running the room whether it snows or rains or shines. <laughs> <laughs> I was worried about that. Yeah. You seem like you want to just what? get out of Dodge. You know? No, I'm going to take the bus. Okay. I don't have to drive. Okay. Yeah, I don't have to drive at all. Okay. But I mean, I do have to lug my suitcase up yeah, to yeah. the Port Authority. Okay. I'm not okay. taking a cab. You never for took a cab? Not okay. two blocks. Oh, okay. I mean, yeah. you know, mm. it would take me longer to do that. <laughs> Wait for the yeah, to, I mean, it's impossible to get a cab in New York when it rains or snows, first of all. Oh. All right. Have a good day, everyone. I will see you all tomorrow morning in the room. Okay? Very, very good. I like this strategy. What strategy? I know uh, 35 cents is, is, you know, doable. My strategy? Yeah, <laughs> you know, this this strategy? Not me taking more and just get, yeah. only getting a little move, boom, instead of waiting for a dollar. What do you think I've been talking about in the videos uh, for the last uh, hundred uh, years? Uh, Don't you uh, watch all the videos? No, but we, yesterday, that thing should have went flush. Okay. Yeah, it actually should have went flush. For this okay. thing here, you know, this was not as expensive as a stock, for one thing, yeah. okay? That's right, yeah. And it was down a lot. A, okay. this was down a lot. Stock was cheaper, too. Okay. Market was iffy. I thought the market bounced. I mean, there was a lot of other reasons. And A, I had full-on, like, 100% focused on this one this morning to figure out the numbers exactly. Mm -hmm. I did on the staples, and then it never set up. So maybe I would have had more conviction, 16, mm -hmm. 16, 16, if I had spent more energy into it this morning. But I didn't mm -hmm. because of the fact that I was mm -hmm. on top of the staples. But I see how I got right off of it. I got right off the staples, then, and we flipped and went to the other one. But yes, that's exactly what you gotta get to do. 
So basically you need five grand. Five grand you get up to doing like that, you can take risks like that. Okay? Mm, wow. So you're just gonna you're gonna have to chunk it out. You're gonna chunk it out. If you don't have to take the money out of your account, then just chunk, chunk, chunk it out till you build it up.